It's time for a little district breakdown. We are talking 96A. My guy Diggs is over there. We're going to talk some Wiley. We're going to talk some Garland. You know, it's just thinking about Wiley. Wiley kind of, kind of reminds me over the last couple of years of a, of a lowercase version of Prosper, where you're not quite sure what to talk about Prosper, but they always do something in the playoffs. Wiley, I call a lowercase because we don't know what they're going to do in the district, but heck, they always end up making the playoffs. Last year, they went a couple rounds deep, too. So talk about this district and talk about the Wiley teams first, because, you know, East was, went undefeated and now Wiley – as I just hyped them up a little bit, talk about those two guys. Yeah, Wiley, Wiley East and Wiley are are two teams that are obviously I think are going to be at the top of the district. They love this setup, uh, and and a lot of the and the reason they like this setup is because when you look all around Wiley and some of the six A, you see the Planos and Prospers and McKinneys and Allens, and these are all you know three to six thousand student schools. You got Wiley East and Wiley over here who are kind of uh, put with the Garland schools that are very similarly sized, and and Wiley has a little bit of the advantage in being a little bit of a smaller district. Uh, and having a little bit more focused and, and people really getting excited about them. Wiley East for me is the team to keep an eye on. I was uh, our, our guy, uh, Kyle, uh, who covers uh, covers 96A uh, for, for the Wiley paper. Uh, he did an article on Wiley East to get started. Uh, and they've got uh, Howard Fisher and Ethan Hall are going to be fighting for uh, being the quarterback over there. Uh, one of them was a move in and the other one was expected to take over. Uh, so who's going to be the quarterback over there? I think we're having a healthy quarterback battle and that's always a good thing uh, but the player to watch for Wiley East is Michael Henderson this is a very special last year was a sophomore had two pick sixes he is going to be a player that uh, you cannot you basically he's going to take away half the field and you can't throw on his side of the ball uh, you can't throw on this his side of the field because he has the opportunity uh, to make you pay in big ways how about Wiley uh, they got a 1400 yard passer coming back to talk about them and, and is I'm all ready to Kick some butt. Um, oh, yeah, our, our our guy over there, Jagger Bale, and uh, he has he has been very divisive in the Wiley community as far as uh, uh, people you know people love him or or they get frustrated with him, and they're very vocal on social media. But I'm a love him guy. I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of Jagger Bale. You know those Jagger. If you're listening to this, you got some haters on social media. Just shake them off. You know just they just ignore them. Like I I got a lot of haters too, and I can. T- tell you uh, we're both loved in Wiley and, and you are a big you, you're a big part of this team and, and I know he's going to be a big part of this team this year uh, obviously uh, he's, he's going to he's got the year of experience uh, and Jackson Draper is a nice security blanket for him uh, and Cam Draper uh, his uh, I assume they're related I, I don't have that guaranteed you got the Draper brothers over there uh, as a very talented defensive uh, end but where Wiley has really put its bread and butter is on the defensive side of the ball and they have that defensive identity they got the pirate ship and they've got that you know kind of that pirate attitude and, and their linebacking core is obviously probably the best unit in this district uh and brady dalton austin austin fabian and mark dean so they've got the really good defense coming back and in 96a and you saw this last year if you can win a game 14 to 10 17 to 10 uh you're going to do pretty well in this district and i think wiley is very well set up to win uh games like that and i think wiley's going to be right there wiley versus wiley east i think will be our district champion. I think Wiley East is going to have a little bit of the advantage, but if you remember last year, Ward, Wiley East was feeling great and moving into things, and that last week, Rowlett got them. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they kind of put the kink in the armor, and Wiley East didn't have as much success as they did, whereas you have a team like Wiley, and they get in there, and all of a sudden, they become the, the playoff uh, Messiah and win these crazy games against Mesquite Horn. Obviously, Duncanville uh, took them to task, but Wiley is a very talented team, and I expect them to build upon uh, th- that tradition. Wiley's one of those sneaky good teams. Uh, you know, you kind of, they they might be six and four, or seven and three, but you don't want to see them in the playoffs because they could uh, get a game out of you. But I think the rest of the district is where the drama is going to be built in because, very much like last year, I think if, at the end of the day maybe two teams that you could just kind of rule out uh, of, of the playoffs, but everybody I think else has a pretty good chance of having at least a, a, a shall we say a conver- a seat at the table for yeah. a conversation for the final playoff spot. I really like Naaman Forrest and Saxe just because of the talent they've got coming back. 
Rowlett is going to be looking at things, saying, hey, what about us? Garland, and even North Garland, despite the fact that they've had two really high-profile transfers, they're, they're going to be kind of hyped up and say, what about us as well? And even Lakeview is very young, and, and if, if their talent steps up, there's a lot to be said for that. So Garland ISD, even though it may not have some of the best talent, it's some of the most fun because you just truly do not know who's going to make the playoffs and what's going to happen. But I really like D'Angelo Perales. He's going to be coming back, coach his son uh, at quarterback Ivan Garcia but they don't got that you know they don't got the Marcus Steele this year they don't got some of those big you know big size uh, on the defensive line and name and forest really struggles with depth so I think that uh, that's going to be a big problem for name and forest whereas Saxe they have a little bit more depth than the rest of uh, the district and they got a quarterback coming back and Brendan George who is expected to be really good a uh, Kalik Lockett is a fantastic receiver they've got coming back and Brendan Haygood as a young running back they've got coming back. Uh, and they've always had a good defensive line. Uh, Saxe is uh, as bread and butter. Uh, Coach Barron's always has a really good defensive line over there. I'm worried about their secondary. So how is that going to be? Uh, you know, And I'm also worried about their linebacker crew. We talked about uh, Wiley having that really good linebacker crew. Uh, so Saxe has a lot of questions as well. But for me, I like Naaman Forrest and Saxe as the other two playoff teams. Well, you look at the, the other teams. If, if we're saying the district is everybody's got a seat at the table, then you're going to want experience. And and Lakeview Centennial and North Garland certainly have that. I know North Garland has like 18 guys for coming back on on both or on offense and defense combined. Lakeview Centennial has some experience coming back. Now, what kind of experience that is, uh, that's for you to dissect for me. But those guys may make a push because of that. Absolutely. But, you know, North Garland, they, they lost, we talked about it with five, six, a, they lost a quarterback. I'm doing research for this district. They're running back Jaden Davis transferred to Dallas Christian. So their big bulk of their offense at North Garland is, is gone, but they still have Mateo Howard and Decorius Taylor. But like we talked about last week with Sam Houston, their offensive and defensive lines and the depth and the numbers are just really not where you want it to be. So North Garland was relying on those top end guys and hopefully having an injury free season, uh, to be their kind of narrative. And and I think that with this year, I had them in the playoffs to start out, you know, kind of my preseason analysis, and I've dropped them all the way to number seven after seeing some of the losses that they've had. Uh, but Lakeview, they've got Julius Spencer coming back, Malachi Boyd and Xavier Wright. They've got a lot of kids coming back and a lot to be excited about. Rowlett has a lot to be excited about. I think they got some of the best players coming back in the district. Andrew Ellison uh, got some experience last year when uh, uh, the Boyd player got hurt a couple of times uh, in the season. Uh, Jermias Benson, a really talented running back. Uh, Joseph Brox is also a talented safety. And Isaiah Jennings, a very talented cornerback. And we're going to see what they have all about. They're going to be starting their season against Plano East. So uh, I'll, I'll have my eye on Rowlett pretty early in the season. Garland, you know, you know, they had that peak a couple of years. Ago, then they lost to Tyler Legacy in that game where they were 10 and 0 and expected to have that run and, and lost in the first round. Uh, so that might have been their peak, but they're obviously going to have some talent coming back in Terrence Green and Zaylin Reynolds. Uh, so, at, like we said, a lot of players that are going to have a lot of uh, teams that are going to have seats at the table, and all four of those, if they've got the right connection of of, of special teams and, and staying healthy and having some young kids coming up, all four of those teams are definitely going to compete for those last two playoff spots. And Wiley and Wiley East are definitely not untouchable. You know, certainly there's a situation, I think we picked Wiley East 7th or 8th last year, and they ended up starting out 9-0. and uh, So this is a district where you can have that wide variety of teams that we're talking at seven and eight they end up at one and two i remember wiley east uh, coach mentioning in a couple of articles he felt disrespected at the mouth that teams were hmm. picking him not to be at the bottom part of the district so lakeview and north garland they're probably listening to us right now going we got him exactly where we want him because we're going to show up and we're going to show out all right digs you hit me with the one through nine Got number one, Wiley East, number two, Wiley, number three, Naaman Forest, four, Saxe, five, Rowlett, six, the Owls from Garland, seven, North Garland, eight, Lakeview Centennial, and nine, South Garland. There you have it. He told it right from the horse's mouth. All right, we're talking 10 6 8 next week, and we're going out to Rockwall and out to a little further east, Texas. You hate going east, Ward, so hopefully you can put on your big boy pants and be here next week and have a good attitude. I'll have a good attitude. I'll have a good attitude. I'm that guy. I'll see you next week, Diggy. See you next week.